टा so the larvae of tinea solium and tinea segenata are present in their respective intermediate host in the case of tinea segenata the respective intermediate host is cow so therefore the larvae is present in the muscles of the cow how it reach to the muscles of the cow again we will learn in the life cycle of this parasite while the intermediate host of tinea solium is pig so therefore the larvae of the tinea solium will be present in the muscles of the pig so these two tinea solium and tinea segenata can be transmitted to the human being by ingestion of larvae present in the undercooked or raw meat of cow in case of tinea segenata and undercooked or raw meat of pig or pork in case of tinea solium now there is one another transmission of tinea solium the eggs of the tinea solium can be transmitted from human to human we will discuss these things in the later stages of this lecture so again come to the transmission after transmission the life cycle of this parasites is important to discuss so if human being is infected with tinea segenata or tinea solium so in both cases the adult tapeworm of tinea solium or tinea segenata will be present in the intestine of the human being and we know that adult tapeworm continuously shed the distal proglottid or the distal segments present at the distal part of the body and those segment or proglottids are gravid they contain eggs so therefore when tinea solium the adult worm of tinea solium or tinea segenata is present in the intestine it will sh continuously shed the gravid proglottid and the gravid proglottid will be excreted in the feces of the human being and the feces of the human being will contain eggs of the tinea soli tinea solium or tinea segenata now if these eggs get a chance to reach to the food or water of tinea uh, water of pigs or cow in case of tinea solium it is important to reach these egg to the water or food of the pig because pig is the intermediate host of tinea solium and in case of tinea segenata it is important to reach these eggs to the food or water of the tinea segenata sorry to the food or water of the cow because cow is the intermediate host of tinea segenata so when these eggs are ingested by tinea uh, ingested by pigs or cow in their food or water so these egg reach to the intestine of the respective intermediate host which could be cow or which could be pigs depend on the species of the tinea when these eggs reach to the intestine so larvae hatch out from this eggs in the intestine and this larvae has the ability to penetrate the intestinal wall and enter into the blood of the intermediate host and with the blood they reach to the different muscles of the body and inside the muscle this larvae form a cyst and convert it into another stage which is known as cysticercae cysti sarcai so it is the stage 
or you can say it is the cyst stage which is present in the muscles of the intermediate host. So, therefore, when we eat undercooked or raw meat of pig or cow which contain cysticercae, so this cysticercae reach to the human being and inside the human being it reach to the intestine of the human being and this cysticercae developed into larvae and this larvae developed into adult tenia worms into 3 month. The length of the adult tenia worm is different. It is 10 meter in case of tenia saginata and it is 5 meter in case of tenia solium and the life cycle is completed in definitive and intermediate host. Now what is the pathology and clinical finding of pathogenesis and clinical finding of these presence or infection of this worms or parasite. So the pathogenesis and clinical finding is very mild because the presence of the adult worm of tenia saginata or tenia solum do not have the ability to penetrate or cause massive damage to the human intestine. So therefore, there would be a little abdominal discomfort which can result in diarrhea or anorexia or abdominal pain not more than this. But one thing is very important in case of worms or uh, intestinal parasites, the load of the parasite is very important because there are some people who are getting infection and again and again in that case the load of the parasites become enlarged or increase into the intestine of that host. So, in that case the system the symptoms or the clinical manifestation become more severe or mild to severe. But in case of lower load of parasite present in the intestine. So, there is usually a mild discomfort or in some cases or in most cases the patient remain asymptomatic because the patient can deal itself with the presence of the lower load of the intestine into the uh, lower load of parasite into the intestine of the human being. So, the clinical uh, it was the pathogenesis and clinical finding of the tenia solium and tenia saginata. But one thing is important in case of tenia solium that the eggs of the tenia solium passes in the feces of the human being has the ability to infect another human because adult worm is present in the human being. So, therefore, eggs are passed in the feces of the human being. So, in case of tenia solium, when the eggs of tenia solium are passed into the feces of the human being, when these eggs get a chance to enter into the food or water of another human being and another human being ingest this eggs in his or her food or water. So, this egg of tenia solium has the ability to reach to the small intestine and larvae hatches out from this egg and this larvae penetrate the mucosal wall or intestinal wall and enter into the blood and blood can reach or blood can carry this larvae to the different organ of the body particularly brain and eyes. So, when this larvae reach to the human brain or eyes, it result in the formation of cyst in the brain or eyes because inside the muscles the larvae form cyst. So, in that case if cyst is present in brain or cyst in present in eye it can cause detrimental or severe consequences of central nervous system or eyes. So, it is very important in case of tenia solium and this infection or this disease caused by the larvae of the tenia solium is known as cysticercosis because it is caused by cysticercae therefore this 
part or this scene of infection caused by tinea solium is known as cysticercosis while the intestinal infection caused by both tinea saginata and tinea solium is known as finally I would like to tell you about the lab diagnosis of the tinea saginata and tinea solium. So, you can see or you can we can detect two important things into the feces of the infected human being. Number one, we can detect eggs of the tinea solium and tinea saginata. But important thing is that the egg of both species is microscopically indistinguishable from one another. So therefore, the egg of the tinea solium and tinea saginata look similar under microscope into the feces. And other things we can also have proglotid or segments of the worms in the feces of the infected person. In some cases, these proglotid or segments of the uh, worms, adult worms shed out with the feces of the infected human being, while in some other cases, it only protrude from the anus of the infected person while defecating. So, these are the two methods used for the laboratory diagnosis of the tinea saginata and tinea solium. So, therefore, in some instance, you can get proglotid or segments of the worm for the diagnosis. How we will diagnose that worm and how we will identify the eggs of tinea solium and tinea saginata under microscope. So, we will discuss these two things on PPT because on PPT we can better understand these two steps. While in case of cystic sarcosis, in the case of tinea solium, as cyst is formed into the muscle, therefore the cysts are usually recognized with the help of radiological procedure like computed tomography or any other procedure and they are surgically removed. So we do not do anything for the diagnosis of cystic sarcosis in the laboratory. I shall stop here. Uh, today's lecture and uh, if you are benefiting from my lecture I would request you to please subscribe my YouTube channel Dr. Aman's video and also try to hit bell icon in order to get notification for my upcoming video. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel Fee Amanillah.